Well, it's been pretty remarkable, actually, this month so far. September has been extreme and it has been firmly driven by the tropics. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is safe and well out there. We do have, of course, Storm Agnes, named by the Met Office, going to be paying a visit to UK and our shores during the course of tomorrow. We could see winds on the coast in excess of 80 miles an hour. And widely, we could see 40, 50 miles per hour inland here. It is the first named storm of the 2023-24 season. But also, the tropics continue to create a headache for the end game of September and into early portions of October. The front-running end of October could be quite a headache in terms of dictating where we're going. Now, I showed you in recent videos the... Um, the increased chance of seeing higher pressure building out of Europe westwards and settling things down over the UK and Ireland and a, deck, a direct response to the Man Julian Oscillation heading through the uh, continental maritime region and into the west and central portion of the Pacific Ocean that then in turn changes the upper pattern throughout the northern hemisphere. Now, the Arctic Oscillation is positive, the North Atlantic Oscillation is negative, and uh, so it's not always, um, particularly often, that you see that where you've got the AO and the NEO not necessarily correlating with each other. But look at this here. So I wanted to start off today's video by showing you the exceptional spread in the models. So we're above average at 8.50. This is, of course, for London. And you can see here the above average 850s temperatures close to 8 to 10 Celsius at the moment here. And then as we go through the final days of the month, we kind of drop slightly closer to average. But look at the spread. Look at how a lot of the members actually indicate a push of warmer air as we step into the first couple of days of October here. And then as we go through week one of October, there's a tremendous amount of spread. Some of the 850 temperatures according to some members are up at 15 celsius above freezing but we also have some members down close to freezing so we've almost got a a temperature difference at 850 at 5,000 feet above london a spread of nearly 15 celsius and that is because we've got tropical systems continuing to run north over the North Atlantic, interacting with the jet stream. And of course, when you've got that interaction of tropical warmth lifting north, engaging with the jet stream, it increases the strength of the jet, but also it's like flicking a skipping rope. It then buckles the jet, of course, and that is what increases amplification in the upper air pattern across the Atlantic and then connecting in with Europe as well. So we've got a tremendous amount of uncertainty week one of October Based on the latest run of the GFS Ensemble, thanks to the fact that we've got the tropics continuing to drive the pattern at the moment here, it really is the tropics that's dictating the, um, it's it's essentially um, the tail wagging the dog as opposed to the, the dog wagging the tail, if you catch my drift here. Interesting things with regards to the Indian Ocean Dipole, we'll touch on this a little bit more in the upcoming Global Weather Report this Sunday, so addiction, addition, addiction, addition. 61 we'll talk about a few things with regards to climate now this channel i try my best to be unbiased i try to show you things i don't claim to know it all in fact i'm going to show you just in a second why i don't know it all but trying to show you both balance in terms of climate no agenda here with regards to one way or another here so we're going to look at the rise in temperature globally which is quite startling at the moment here, but also the IOD, the Indian Ocean Dipole, continues to intensify in a positive state. So in other words, we're seeing continued cooling against the Indonesian side of the Indian Ocean and warming, increasing warming over the western portion of the Indian Ocean. The reason why I'm showing you this is a little taster of the, the, the Global Weather Report this upcoming Sunday because we're going to talk a little bit more about winter. And it looks as if this is approaching the strongest positive Indian Ocean Dipole since November 2019. And we're only 
0.7 Celsius below that peak of 2019. The reason why I'm saying this, folks, is that I believe anyway and there was some linkage to the exceptionally strong polar vortex back in 2019-20 to the very strong, record strong, positive Indian Ocean dipole. Now, you know, there are some sources out there that suggest that this helped par a super strong polar vortex and then in turn a very unsettled but very, very warm pattern for the UK, Ireland and Western Europe during that winter season here. So this is a little bit of a concern for me and for others that want to see a cool winter. Now I know not a lot of people want to see a cool winter either, fuel bills, etc., etc. But certainly for cool weather lovers like myself and like many of you out there that watch these videos, this is not a particularly good indicator with the Indian Ocean dipole. Of course, we'll look at um, you know, the El Nino solar cycle, etc., etc. There's going to be a lot more chat coming up with regards to the winter. But this, folks, is certainly not the greatest signal for cold. But of course, we're a long way off um, getting into the nuts and bolts of the winter forecast here. It's really just still continuing to build the ideas. Tweet here 18 hours ago by Gavs Weathervid's latest high res UK Met Office model suggesting 75 to 80 mile an hour gust through the Irish Sea Wednesday afternoon and into the evening, courtesy of Storm Agnes. Here, this is a tweet by myself showing that uh, based on raw look at the GFS, the latest run of the GFS 1500 Wednesday afternoon looks lively through the Irish Sea and adjacent coasts. What is interesting about this here, if you look back at the source of where this came from this broke away from storm ophelia tropical storm ophelia that moving in brought wind and flooding to parts of north carolina south carolina and the mid-atlantic states of the united states and then this kind of essentially broke off the northern side of the circulation got caught up in a jet stream that was forced fairly far south and then it's been crossing the atlantic in the last 24 to 36 hours or so since the weekend now this system is crossing from the warm side to the cold side of the jet and that is creating a rapid deepening of the system it looks as if it could drop 30 millibars inside 24 hours which of course uh, constitute constitutes rapid cyclogenesis we'll look at that in just a second here interesting tweet here by james peacock like i said there is no bias with regards to the climate situation but the hadley uh, central england temperature has stayed record high through the 24th of september but according to recent forecast model runs will drop perilously close to 2006 now september 2006 holds the candle for the warmest september on record for the british isles here so we could be close to the warmest september on record according to the cet and uh, the gfs 12z puts it at approximately 16.9 Celsius for the month, while 2006 was 16.8. Now, the second warmest September on record was 2016. So exactly a decade later, uh, we had the second warmest September on record here. So this is the second non good indicator for a cold winter so a very warm september i don't believe there's been any example of a of a cold winter following a very very warm september for the uk here so both the positive in the ocean dipole and a very warm possibly record warm september is two aspects that i don't think is particularly good if you want a winter of cold and uh, of course we have this um, tweet here by Dr. Ryan Murray, global temperature anomaly has gone over 1 Celsius compared to the 91 to 2020 baseline for the past two weeks. Uh, compared to pre-industrial levels or 1850 to 1900, that's close to 2 Celsius above average. So the earth outside the tropics is very warm compared to what's normal for mid-September here. So uh, Again, this is this is stuff that we'll chat about this upcoming weekend in the Global Weather Report. But certainly the rise in the temperature at the moment here 
is very, very stark indeed. Now, our good friend David Birch, which I've got a massive amount of respect for, his knowledge is incredible. Now, David leans on the, you know, on the, um, on the side where you know climate's going through the cycles. He's uh, he's not a believer in uh, you know carbon dioxide driven warming, and he puts out this very interesting tweet, and I hope David doesn't mind me sharing this with you. But if you think mankind can influence a planet's climate in any way, shape, or form, I'm afraid you're a lost soul. Very interesting tweet here, looking at the size of the sun and the power of the sun. And look at this release of energy through these coronal mass ejections. Look at the size of the earth compared to the sun. And I think that's a very, very poignant um, example of how, you know, there is a lot more going on, I think, than just, you know, one element causing warming of the earth here. So, um, like I say, I hope David doesn't mind me sharing that with you. I just, I'm trying to show you the both sides of the argument, and I think both sides of the argument has valid validity to it. Um, so, some interesting stuff with regards to uh, Agnes here and the strength. Now, like I said, we are going to see the system become very, very deep for a period of time. It's going to peak in intensity, probably a few hundred miles to the southwest of the Irish coastline, at probably the mid 960s millibars, a very tight, compact system. As it starts to weaken and go through that weakening state, it starts to lose its compactness. You start to see the energy spread out a little bit more, and that is exactly what we're going to see. It's going to be Agnes is going to be in a weakening form as it crosses Ireland and the UK during the course of tomorrow, but it will still pack a punch. Luckily, this thing will not hit at peak intensity. The pressure will have risen by possibly a good 15 to 20 millibars by the time it reaches the UK mainland during the course of tomorrow. But a little bit of interest and input by Dan Harris of the Met Office, the left exit region. So this system will enter the right entrance region of the jet and exit the left exit region of the jet. Now, I'm sure the Met Office Deep Dive today, usually published on a Tuesday afternoon, we'll look at this in a bit of detail as well. But interesting stuff, the left exit is one of the two main development zones of a jet that is not accelerating. So it's about accelerating and decelerating air and how the pressure is forced to fall within a particular a section of the jet stream. So here the, the pressure gradient aloft quickly reduces, but the Coriolis linked to the flow strength takes time to do so. This causes upper diversions. So of course the air is forced to rise and then diverge out from the top of the system. But like the tropical situation here, remember this is it was born off a tropical system, but of course it is a fully cool core low pressure system by the time it reaches our shores and even by now even over the mid-atlantic conditions are not conducive from a tropical point of view water temperatures aren't as warm and of course it's driven by the atmosphere as opposed to the ocean like tropical systems would be uh, this causes upper diversions and the mass loss in air column lowering the pressure here and there is also an interesting link by stuart markham uh, showing the some uh, explanation with regards to uh, this situation here as it unfolds so lots of things going on here at the moment here before i run out of time we'll have a look at the details here so this system looks according to the latest one of the gfs to peak at around 966 millibars well to the southwest of the british isles we've got a shield of moisture heaviest rainfall on the northern side of the circulation strongest winds arguably on the south side as the system then Approaches the southwest of, of Ireland. It's already back up to 971 millibars. And notice here that the envelope starts to open slightly here. Still a fairly compact system. Strongest wind south coast, east coast of Ireland, up through the Irish Sea, coastal Wales, England, northwest England, southwest Scotland, strongest winds. Notice here the bulk of the moisture here goes through Northern Ireland, northern England, and the bulk of Scotland here. This is at 1800 tomorrow. So it, it looks as if the worst of the conditions will stay north of the Midlands here. But the problem that we've got is this is not the last system to make an approach here. We've got several other areas of low pressure moving through 
as we go in towards the weekend here. I've got another system possibly as well. Run out of time. Be sure to uh, like, share and subscribe. More again tomorrow.